All right, we are going to make a feeder for our guineas. We have a fairly good sized old trash can here on the left that uh, doesn't work anymore and got a sheet of joist metal that is 16 inches wide and then bought from Tractor Supply Company the 16 inch pan that you see on the lower right here. I used the 16 inch pan to draw a circle. Uh, the lip of the pan was slightly bigger than uh, 16 inches, the, the width of the lip of the pan. So I just left it go off the edge a little bit. And when you have 10 snips, uh, they will cut to either the left or the right or straight. And so I'm right handed, so I'm using 10 snips for the right hand that cut to the left. So we'll be cutting this out next. 16 inch pan is going to be the base that holds the feed. The circle you see that I have cut out underneath of the old trash can is going to be made into a sort of an upside down funnel to help direct the feed out to the outer edges and out into the pan so that all we get all the feed when the, when the feed is almost uh, gone, all the feed will be directed out into the pan. Now, in order to make this uh, upside down type funnel, we're going to cut out a section and then bring it around and rivet it together. All right, I just guessed at the amount to cut out for the triangle to take out from the uh, section of metal. I've put it here with a binder clip on it just to show that it's still too big. We want it to be slightly, well, approximately the same width, or almost exactly the same width as a trash can. In this case, the trash can is 12 inches wide. And so I'm going to cut some more out of the metal, and then we'll have to leave enough of an overlap to be able to rivet it together. I've determined that we need to take about that much more out uh, where you see the red line in order to take the funnel down to 12 inches across. I said funnel, it's not really a funnel, uh, it's actually a cone. And so I'll cut that out and then we'll drill some holes for the rivets and we'll rivet it together. Okay, I'm ready to drill the holes for the rivets. And for this thin metal, I've just purchased these short rivets. And I'm using a 532nd inch drill bit. To get a more perfect cover, I just thought about this as I was getting ready to drill the holes. But you could actually, instead of cutting right to the center, start right here and then cut down this way to your point here and that would give you a piece in this section you would still need to cut through here but that would give you a piece here in this section that would then overlap here more perfectly mine is just going to come to a point which will be fine but if you want a little more of an overlap just cut down here instead I've started here by drilling holes first in a straight line that I drew up to the center. The line is actually on the other side of the metal. And one thing I discovered when you bring the metal around in a circle and you're eliminating as much as I've eliminated here, one piece is going to be down a little bit further <clears throat> than the other one. So I'm having to cut some of this off. And so I'm going to cut that off and just taper that in right up around here. And I have one extra hole here that I started too close to the edge, so need to not start the holes quite so close to the edge. I'm now ready to drill the holes the whole way through, and I've just put a little clamp on here to, well it's actually a fairly big clamp, to hold this really tight while I do the drilling. All right, we're done with the riveting, and there's the final result. I made it slightly bigger than the trash can, so that we'll make sure and have the feed go out just beyond the trash can. Now, the next thing I'm going to do 
is use two threaded rods perpendicular to each other, putting them uh, through a hole, through four holes in the pan, four holes in the near the bottom of the trash can, and then four holes in the cone. The cone will rest on the very bottom of the pan to cause the feed to come out to the edges, and the thread of rods will keep the bottom of the trash can at the right elevation so that only the right amount of feed comes out at a time. All right, I have the threaded rods through the bottom part, the 16 inch pan, and in order to drill the holes I first pop the pan with a nail to get a point to start. I just eyed it um, to get it perpendicular. I think it's fairly close. I'm using two foot long one quarter inch threaded rod and so I'll have to cut the threaded rod off and I'm going to let it stick out just a little bit on each side here and you need to get two nuts for either end so you'll need a total of eight nuts so that you can fasten one nut in tight against the other one to secure it and then you have to make sure when you're drilling that one rod is drilled in the holes for the one rod are drilled higher than the other one this one is down from the top of the pan probably three quarters of an inch and this one is down probably not much more than a half an inch or maybe not quite a half an inch so you want your rods in there perpendicular and crossing over each other and now we just need to determine where the rods will go through our cone drill holes in the cone and then also drill holes in the top part of the trash can. All right, there is the cone with the threaded rods through it. That was quick and easy to do. And now we'll just sit the trash can on top in order to see where it meets the threaded rods. And of course the same thing will apply with it one rod will go through higher than the other one and we'll be done and here is the finished product with no lid on it yet and no feet in it but you can see down here the gap between the bottom of the trash can and where the funnel comes down I might seal that up. There's little gaps there I might seal up with a little bit of silicone. And if you look down inside, you can see the cone down there with the threaded rods going through it and also through the trash can. So there is the completed chicken or guinea feeder. Here is the guinea feeder in use. When I loaded it up last night, it held between 60 and 70 pounds of feed. I have a makeshift latch here right now. Uh, the lid is not tight, so I've just duct taped this here to hold it temporarily. You can see how much feed is left. That was full. So that should last at least a week and a half, maybe two weeks at the current rate of use. The lid that was on the trash can that I used for the guinea feeder was not very sturdy and the guineas uh, were tenacious enough that they actually got it to come off. And so I'm making another lid. I've started by making a cone and then I've set that down on top of the can 
marked around inside of the cone where the edge of the can is and now I'm going to cut strips the whole way around in order to shape the lid to fit down on the feeder. Because the guineas were sitting on the other lid so much, the lid that had come with the trash can, it was a little flat, I had to make a new lid and so I did it by simply making another cone only having some of it fold down at the edge and then in order to finish it I just simply used the metal tape that HVAC uh, technicians use to seal up ducts and it is doing a good job.